Hi guys, Mike here for Noisegate again. Today I'm checking out the Source Audio Collider Delay Plus Reverb pedal, which has been an absolute treat to have on my desk for a week or so. It sounds gorgeous. But there's a lot of demos out there already, so I didn't want to just do another demo going through all the effect engines, blah, 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 blah. It's awesome. So I thought we'd dive into what we can do with sequencing the parameters on the actual pedal, because they can all be controlled via MIDI. But how can we use that in a musical context? Like, what can we do with that power? So let's have a go. Okay, for this demo, I'm going to use my Electron Digitone. And plugged into that is my Arturia Keystep. Our dry signal is just this electric piano sound. Nothing fancy happening there. And before we get stuck into all this MIDI madness, just going to quickly demo the effects that we're going to use. So on the delay side, I'm going to use the reverse delay. And on the reverb side, I'm going to use the shimmer, which is awesome. So start with reverse delay. I've got a really high feedback setting, so it's almost never ending. These two control knobs are modulation on this setting. So control one is modulation depth. So if we go, you can hear it getting nice and wobbly. Great for kind of lo-fi sounding effects. So on the reverb side, we've got that glorious shimmer. Honestly, the shimmer effect on this pedal is one of the nicest I've ever heard. I've had most of the big hitters in the reverb and delay world over the years, your Eventides, your Strymons, your Empresses. It's right up there. It's easily on par. the mix very high up, but let's do it anyway. All right, on to what we're here for, the MIDI stuff. So I'm going to plug my MIDI cable in. So I've taken a MIDI cable from the MIDI output of the Digitone to the MIDI input on the Collider. So far, this is just syncing tempo, which is MIDI clock. So this is sending its tempo. In this case, it's just its internal tempo. It's not synced to anything else. So this is generating the clock. The only result of that at this point is that it syncs the delay times, depending on where you have this switch. It's a very handy feature in itself. Having a MIDI sync delay is super useful. But since all of these parameters on this panel can be modulated, sequenced, whatever, there's fun to be had there. And I found something good, I think. I kind of like it. So sequencing effects boxes can be, you know, it's a process of discovery, of exploration. It's not as direct as sequencing a synthesizer where you're opening and closing a filter, for example. You always know what the result of that is going to be. Effects boxes tend to be a bit more 
you just don't know what you're going to get. How's this delay going to respond to MIDI control change signal? So we'll just tear down one that I made earlier. I'm just going to change over to my MIDI track that I built earlier today. And I'll just leave it as the delay to start with. So as you can hear, there's something rhythmic happening there. So on some of these steps, I have, you can see that knob lit up up here, which is down there. I have different parameters being sent and they're going to this switch here, switching it to different time divisions. So you end up with this kind of choppy mess, really, but it's rhythmic to our tempo. And especially when you have that feedback all the way up, you end up with this weird choppy cloud of melodies just floating along. So then I thought, hey, what else can I do? I love the shimmer reverb, as you no doubt figured out. <laughs> now we'll bring that in a little bit and can listen to what I decided on. Did you hear that? That shimmer just did a big wave by itself. It's because I have an LFO. An LFO is just a signal that's modulating. In this case, it's a triangle wave. So it's just going up and down like a snake. And it's sending that changing signal to this knob on the, the, uh, on the reverb side. And so it's generating this this big wave of shimmery stuff. And I like it. Usually on a pedal, you might do that with an expression pedal or manually just by turning the knob. But now I can just be like, yeah, you do it for me, please. So how do you send a signal from here to a specific place on there? Well, each of these knobs has what you call a control change parameter or a MIDI control change parameter. A MIDI CC value is the common term. And you'll find on the manufacturer's websites, they tend to have a MIDI implementation chart. So I've got mine on my phone here. And on these charts, they'll tell you, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. You got CC number, delay, there's your delay parameters, CC number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tells you what those parameters do. Then it's just a matter of mapping a MIDI sequencer. In this case, the Digitone could be Ableton, could be a pedal, would be anything that can generate MIDI control changes, whatever you like. There's tons of stuff that does it. And yeah, in this scenario, I've mapped these knobs or the LFO or the sequencer to send that specific signal to this device via MIDI. There are different MIDI channels. There's MIDI one through 16, I think, 12, 16, 16 sounds right. Most devices are by default mapped to MIDI channel one. It'd be very surprising to get a device out of the box and it's not mapped to MIDI channel one by default. So most of the time you can just plug and play and it works.
So this is obviously only scratching the surface. This is my first try at uh, finding some MIDI parameters on this box to play with. And it works very well. It sounds awesome. I mean, it's hard not to with the incredibly high quality effects in this box. But it's just a bonus, isn't it? Having a bit of MIDI control over it. It's very easy to get carried away with these pedals. Hopefully Source will let me hang on to this one for a little bit. It's going to be hard to give it back. <laughs> 